Hello and welcome to a British audiophile. This is going to be my new office space when it's fully decorated. There's quite a bit of work to do in the interim. We're in the eaves of what is a 650 year old stable block. So I think it's going to be quite a quiet space for me to do some filming, especially if my family's two stories below. Anyway, onto the business at hand. I've been doing this channel for around two and a half years and it's surprising during that time that I'm yet to review a CD player. And that's given the fact that for over 20 years of my audiophile journey, CD was my primary source. My first CD player was a Yamaha. I can't remember the exact model, but it was something like the CDX410, which I inherited from my parents in the early 90s when they upgraded their CD player to the Nakamishi CD4. In the mid 90s, I purchased a Marantz CD63, which was definitely an upgrade from the Yamaha. It wasn't in my system long. It must have been around, now I'm guessing, but I'm gonna go with 1997, where I spent a few weeks in the summer working for Exposure at their small facility, which was in Hove near Brighton. And that was the time that they were putting the final touches to their first CD player. That represented quite a step up for me financially. The retail price was around 13, 1400 pounds, whereas the Marantz was around three, 400 pounds. I was able to take advantage of that trade connection. It's still quite a big outlay around eight, 900 pounds is what I wound up paying for it. I also bought the matching integrated amplifier, the Exposure 25, which I believe was their first integrated amplifier with a remote control, but that got upgraded pretty quickly to the Exposure 21 preamp and 18 super mono blocks that I enjoy in my system to this day. So what about the CD player? Well, that remained my main source for over two decades. In fact, it's only recently that I took it out of my system. I still own it. It's in a box in the loft here somewhere. But I transferred all my CDs onto a USB drive. And when I plugged that directly into my Aurelic Aries Mini and used that as a transport compared to my CD player as a transport, I didn't notice any drop in fidelity. So the convenience of having all your music on a library accessible is something that I really enjoyed and creating playlists. That's something that reminded me of my tape loving days of the past and something that I always missed about CDs. But it's about time I took a look at what these new CD players had to offer. I don't think the format's dead by any means. There's something nice about physical media, pulling out those silver discs, placing them into a tray perhaps not as alluring as a vinyl spinning disc, but a close second. So the Primair CD15 is gonna be my first CD player review. It's about time. I also requested the matching amplifier, the i15. I've heard good things about Primair products in the industry, and I wanted to find out how good this starter Primair setup was. So come on, I hope you hang around to find out how I got on. The Primair CD15 Prisma retails for £1,650, available in a titanium finish or anodized black. It's a slender unit measuring 350mm wide and just 73mm high. That's 13.8 by 2.9 inches. The way that the top cover is recessed to expose part of the chassis is a nice touch. Everything feels of premium quality, the thickness of the aluminium faceplate thickness of the top cover with its embossed logo for that matter and the diminutive polished aluminium buttons. Controls on the front face here are kept to a minimum as is consistent with the best simple elegant Scandinavian design. On the left there's a button to take the CD15 out of standby. Below the front loading CD slot is a clear OLED display. On the right two buttons one to play and to skip forward. The other button will pause, stop and eject the CD. I can't help but think that the eject button should be on the top though. Full menu settings are accessible through the supplied remote control. This includes the ability to set a fixed or variable volume control. There are also options to adjust the auto dim interval as well as set the time after which the unit will go into standby. The remote control itself may be plastic, but it's a decent size and the controls are very logically laid out, making it intuitive in use. It can also control other Primair devices. Prisma refers to Primair's network streaming platform, which is integrated into this player. You'll be required to connect the player to your network, either by Ethernet or Wi-Fi. 
Downloading the free Google Home app on your Android or iOS device will allow you to configure this player to your network. Relying on Google's operating system means that the Prisma device is easy to set up and should be pretty reliable. By downloading the Prisma app, you may access internet radio, music stored on USB flash drives, stream via Spotify, Tidal, Cobuzz, and most of the streaming services you're likely to want to use. However, the interface should be viewed as a basic streaming solution for reasons I'll discuss later. Thankfully, the Prisma platform supports a number of other streaming protocols, including Google Chromecast, AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect. It's Rune ready and can handle Bluetooth as well. On the rear, you'll find one set of single-ended RCA analog outputs, an optical and coaxial digital output to connect to an external DAC but there's no digital inputs, so you can't use this device as a standalone DAC for other digital sources. Below the Ethernet LAN connection is the USB-A port, where you'd plug in your stored music on USB flash drives. The RS-232 port is for system control, and there are 12 volt trigger and IR connections for home installation use. The matching i15 amplifier is housed in an identical chassis, for £1,200 you can purchase the standalone amplifier, but there's a version with a moving magnet phono stage for £1,450, or with the Prisma network streaming module and built-in DAC for £1,700. The minimalist aesthetic is maintained on the i15 amplifier, a button to take it out of standby, an input selector that toggles on this unit between the phono stage and four analog inputs. On the other side, are two buttons to adjust the volume up and down. Like the CD player, further functions are accessible via the same remote control, such as renaming the input, setting startup and maximum volume controls, and adjusting the auto dim and standby settings. On the rear, you'll observe five single-ended RCA analog inputs, a line out presumably to connect to recording devices, and pre-outs to connect to power amps or powered subwoofers. The system and home integration connections are here on this Prime Air product too. The speaker binding posts are of a quality that I'd expect on an amplifier around this price. Peeking under the cover and you can see why the i15 can get away with being such a compact unit. It deploys a switch mode power supply and a Hypex UCD Class D amplifier module. You know the type that you get in some C range NAD products? This variant produces 60 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 100 watts into 4 ohms. It's reassuring to see that the main circuit board is neatly laid out. Let's start with the sound of the CD player first. And I'm just gonna share with you my experiences, my journey of what I went through. So I was initially listening to my own system, predominantly anyway. My Aurelic Aries Mini fed into a Denifruits Pontus 2 DAC and then to my Exposure 21 Pre and 18 Super Monoblocks, and they were powering my Pryat Response 1SC speakers, supplemented by a RHEL Strata 3 subwoofer, a system that I know inside out. And when I switched in the CD15, I was expecting the soundstage to shrink in width, but especially in soundstage depth, and that natural tonality, that acoustic mass to be gone, that's what I generally tend to expect from these chip-based DACs. Now, of course, this is a CD player, but inbuilt is a chip-based DAC, and um, that isn't what I got. So let me just explain. I didn't initially pick up on any great difference in terms of soundstage width or soundstage depth, and that typically thin, you know what I mean, clean but sterile type of performance that you get from a lot of source components around this price, there wasn't a hint of it. The CD15 has excellent clarity. That's almost to be expected these days. But what's more impressive is its sense of scale in all directions, and it has a natural tonality. I spent two days listening to this CD player, not doing comparisons and switching it out, just purely listening to this player, playing music from different genres from my playlist, and whatever I threw at it, I just simply couldn't trip it up. It took everything in its stride. The tonality is extremely well judged. Naturally, I did do comparisons, my Aurelic Aries Mini. Now, what you have to bear in mind is that the Aurelic Aries Mini, when it was available, I believe was probably the best sounding streamer that you could buy this side of £500, 
came with a very good built-in ESS DAC. And the reason that Aurelic discontinued it was primarily because it made no commercial sense for them to continue to produce a stream at that price point. They weren't making much money out of it at all. And mine has been upgraded. It's got a linear power supply, which is almost the cost of the streamer itself. I think I'd put that up against any streamer this side of a thousand pounds. So how did that compare to the CD15? Well, it didn't really. It doesn't have the same level of clarity. And in terms of scale, everything was quite significantly truncated down. I'm talking about soundstage depth and soundstage width again. And in a system this revealing when partnered with my Proax and Exposure Pre and Mono blocks, even though the Aurelic Aries Mini has a fairly neutral tonality, it doesn't have the refinement. That digital glare was all too apparent and that robbed it ultimately of a natural presentation. I also spent a good day or so doing comparisons using the Aurelic Aries Mini purely as a digital transport fed into the Denifritz Pontus 2 DAC. Now what you have to bear in mind is that the Denifritz Pontus 2 DAC alone costs more than the Primair CD15. So it's not strictly a fair fight, but it made for an interesting comparison. Ultimately, it was the Aurelic with the Denifrips combo that won through. Everything you got with the CD15, you just got a little bit more of it with that combination. The soundstage was a touch wider, it was a touch deeper. The clarity was a little bit better, everything was a little bit more focused. And perhaps the most obvious trait was the easefulness of the dynamics. The Denifrips and Aurelic combo just dealt with those dynamic swings a little bit more carefree in its presentation. I then disconnected my exposure pre and mono blocks and powered up the matching i15 integrated amplifier. Those listening tests were frustrating if I'm telling the truth. The i15 is close to being a great sounding amplifier, just has a couple of shortcomings. What it shares with the CD player is great tonality. Doesn't matter what genre of music you throw at it, it doesn't pick out any favorites. It also has very good clarity. I'd give it a solid eight out of 10 in that regard as well. Isn't the kind of presentation that draws your attention to details, but they're there in the mix. They just pass over you with a little bit more fluidity than perhaps something that's more detail centric in its presentation. What it lacks is a sense of scale and dynamics. It's got actually very good soundstage depth, but limited soundstage width. And dynamically, it just comes off a little bit polite. That's mainly because it lacks mid bass punch. Now I can't help but think that this is down to power and perhaps I'd be a little bit more impressed with one of its big brothers. For comparison, I use the SMSL VMV A2, which is quite a bit cheaper at 800 pounds and for that price can also handle digital inputs. The A2 is also a class D amplifier and it shares some of the characteristics of the i15, namely a limited sense of oomph and also a good amount of clarity. But where the A2 is very analytical in its tonal balance, primarily because it's got a thin sounding mid-range, that's what you don't get with the Prime Air. The Exposure 2510 is more expensive. I think the price has now crept up to 1700 pounds and you don't have the option of a built-in DAC, but it does come with what is supposed to be a very good built-in phono stage. Those of you who are regular followers of this channel know what I think of that amplifier. That's an amplifier in the sub £2,000 category that I think has it all. In terms of tonality, it's a match for the i15, but in other regards, it steps ahead. And that's because it has even greater clarity. And that's primarily because it has a blacker background, allowing even more micro details to emerge. It also has a much greater sense of lateral scale and dynamic punch. And perhaps the most obvious trait is when it throws out a musical sound field, there's just much more space between where the instruments are located and on a much bigger canvas. The Primair CD15 Prisma CD player is the kind of device that should work well with a wide range of price appropriate amplifiers and speakers. And that's because CD player doesn't impart any particular character on the music. It's not going to color your system in one direction or another. But that's as long as you're using it as a CD player. And yes, if you're using it as a network player, the performance sonically is at a similar level, but you certainly won't be replacing your Blue OS device or even my Aurelic Lightning DS system 
for what is fundamentally a much more rudimentary network player. It supports a reasonable amount of streaming services and platforms, including Rune, but it isn't an exhaustive list. The Prisma app itself is quite laggy as you move from one screen to another, and the display itself is quite basic looking. Perhaps the biggest issue is that you can't seamlessly integrate different sources and different services, so you can't seamlessly switch from one to the other. It's more or less a platform on which those apps sit. The i15 amplifier, well visually it's a stunning match for the CD player. They do look very appealing stacked on top of each other. And it's great that Prime Air give you the option with the amplifier for a built-in DAC or phono stage. Sonically, I can't help but feel that the i15 held the CD15 back. And I would like to try something like the i25 to see if that is a better partnership. So where does that leave me with the i15? Well, I think it's a good sounding amplifier as long as you choose the right speakers and in particular something that's quite easy to drive. The three speakers that I use primarily, I wouldn't call forgiving. And that's fundamentally why I came to the conclusion that I did. And just for the sake of completeness, those three speakers were my Pratt Response 1 SEs, the current version of which retails for around two and a half thousand pounds, the Dali Minuet SEs, the retail for around £1,500, and the Q Acoustic Concept 30s that retail for around £900. The Prime Air CD15 Prisma is an excellent sounding CD player with great tonality, clarity and scale, but the basic network streaming app is perhaps just a little bit more than a convenience. The matching i15 amplifier shares the CD player's great tonality and has a clarity that you wouldn't fault at this price either. Ultimately, it's the lack of rhythmic drive from the amplifier that holds this combination back. But if you are choosing these two components to make an entire system, make sure you choose your speakers carefully. Right, so I need to rate these components and I'm gonna do them individually. Let's start with the excellent sounding CD15, which I'm gonna pull back from outstanding to highly recommended. That has nothing to do with sound quality, it has to do with functionality. I do feel a little short change from the Prisma app. Now, it's understandable given the size of Prime Air, we're not talking about Lembrook that own Blue Sound and the masses of money that they can put into software development. But if you're considering a digital front end around this price, it's still a consideration. And talking about a digital front end, I would like to see a version of this player which is a complete front end digital solution. They do one which doesn't have the CD, which has preamp functionality, and of course you can add a DAC to the amplifier as well, but you're doubling up on components in different boxes. So I would like Primair perhaps to pick up on this suggestion and allow this to handle more digital inputs. It'd be a complete digital front end solution if that's what it did. As for the amplifier, the i15, well, I've gone into it, into this review. It has strengths and weaknesses. And as long as you choose the right speakers, it's still a very good option. It gets a recommended from this channel. At the beginning of this video, I shared my CD journey. Now I'm asking you to share yours, assuming you've got one. But even if you haven't got one, you're contemplating one or not considering one, I'd like to hear about your thoughts and experiences about the CD format. Hopefully you make great discussion in the comments section below. All that remains for me to say is if you like this video, if you like what I'm doing with this channel, you wanna see it grow and you haven't done so already, please do all that social media stuff. Check me out on Patreon for consultancy services and bonus content. Join the ABA club where we get to chat face to face periodically. Until next time, the British audiophile signing off.